Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be setting up my first bullet journal for 2023. I'm using the Archer Olive A5 notebook. For more details about this notebook, you can check out my previous video which I'll link in the description box below. As the main theme for the beginning setup, I chose to use the squat goals and Christmas stickers from Happy Planner. I've already picked out the stickers I want to place down for this page. Because it's my first time setting up a bullet journal, I had filmed this video over the course of a week. I would think really hard on how I wanted to decorate it and then search through the sticker books for what I needed. So for each page or spread, you'll see the sheet where I've already pre-selected the stickers. In this space, I decided to create a skiing scene and make it look really Christmassy. I think it's perfect for the theme of the bullet journal, especially when the bullet journal is called Snowflake. To add more dimension and make full use of the white space, I decided to add a few lines to create piles of snow effect. The next spread is my future log. I had debated back and forth whether or not to include this spread and in the end, I decided to give it a try and see if I actually needed it. My husband and I actually share a Google Calendar for most of our event planning and I could actually do without it but I really liked seeing all the family events we did throughout the year at a glance and so I decided why not. I had also debated whether or not to draw lines for this spread because personally, I don't like to draw lines. It never goes well and sure enough, the first few lines I drew with the midliner, it carried over ink stains from the ruler. I'm like, oi. I replaced the ruler with a business card and tried my best to not feel like I've already ruined the spread. I had wanted the future log to be just two pages and so to fit all of the months, I decided to not pen the calendars in. That's another thing I wouldn't enjoy doing, writing those numbers for all 12 months. I just don't have time for that. The next spread is for my goals and resolutions. Initially, I wanted to work out all of my goals, steps and all into the bullet journal but after brainstorming and mind mapping them out, I found that it required a lot of pages and I just didn't want to do all that in the bullet journal. So for simplicity, I decided to just list what they are and then I would track which months I actually action on them. The finer details will be kept and planned out separately. Another mistake I made with a midliner was drawing it over the words I had just written. It smudged in a little bit, so I'll have to make sure I either use the midliner first or just don't go over the pen marks with it. Next is my reading log. I'm making it a three page spread. It's actually the same kind of spread I made in my 2022 Happy Planner. I really liked it and have actually kept at it throughout the year. So I'm doing this spread again in my bullet journal. Learning from my previous mistake, I'm doing the midliner first before writing it in. But I did another mistake, which you will see in a short while. So for the columns, I have the title and the author. OB stands for own or borrow. Type is whether or not it's a physical book, ebook or audiobook. And then I have the genre, rating and the date I finished reading the book. As I'm writing on the second page, this is when I discovered my mistake. I didn't highlight the correct number of columns, so I had to use my whiteout and highlight them again. It was a little annoying, but I tried not to let my mistake bother me and move on. Yeah. <laughs> 
Over here, I'm doing my legend so that I can refer to it when recording into the log. The pens I'm using here are Papermade Inkjoy 0.7 gel pens and Big 0.7 Jello City pens. I wasn't sure if it had dried yet, so that's why I decided to use this flashcard to prevent any staining. And in case you're wondering, yes, that's a flashcard I used to draft out how I wanted to lay out my spreads in a bullet journal. It's also pretty handy in case I decided to reorder them according to priority. I decided not to draw lines to divide the columns to give it a clean, minimal look. The next spread is for book releases. Actually, this two-page spread may not be necessary in the end because I actually use Goodreads and it already does something similar pretty easily. But I decided to give it a try and see how this goes. The decoration I was trying to go for on top was a scene of a girl visiting a bookstore. I think it turned out pretty okay. It took me a while to get the spacing right for the months. I had to readjust the flower stickers multiple times just to get it right. I think next time I won't include decoration stickers next to the months, especially not in this A5 size. Next page is my reading log. I just realized I had used the same title for this page. I'm not sure why I didn't notice it before, but anyways, this page is mainly to track how many pages I read each day. I have this same reading log in my 2022 Happy Planner and wanted to have it again for 2023. So here I'm writing down the number of days and then I'm listing out the months. To mark each day, I will be referring to a legend I have over at the site and for the number of pages read, I'll mark them using my daughter's gel pens. She doesn't use them as much and so I decided to borrow a few for my bullet journal. Unlike my 2022 page, this time I chose colors that would match with the colors of the decoration. I'm sure by the end of 2023, the result would make the entire page look pretty cute. I decided to remove the washi tape I had used for this first spread and replace them with a few decor stickers. Not sure why, but something about the washi tape felt out of place, so I decided to just remove them. Moving on, I'm working on the best book spread. Each month, I will highlight my favorite book read and stick a picture of the book cover with maybe a short review of the book. I don't have a color printer and so like what I'm currently doing for my 2022 best book page, I'm only printing the book covers every 6 months from a FedEx shop.
The next spread is my watching stats, as in the shows or movies I watched. The columns would just show the number of English TV shows, Asian shows, movies, and anime I watched each month. I do plan to list down the names of those shows I watch, but that's for the monthly sections rather than here. My next spread is the cleaning log. Currently, I do keep a cleaning log, but it's very simplified version where I just group chores into like dusting, sink, vacuum, generic labels like that. For 2023, I decided to go very detailed. I had done a spring cleaning video back in June and had listed out all the things I needed to clean for different areas. I wanted to keep this list and so I'm incorporating it into my bullet journal. After listing out the tasks, I then list the months at the site so that I can mark what I had cleaned for which month. I know there are some lists out there where it's grouped by the cleaning frequency. I had tried that before and it didn't really work for me. I'm going to see how this version goes for 2023 and if it doesn't really work either, maybe the following year I'd mark those that needs frequent cleaning and which one that's done every other month. For the decoration, I try to place stickers along the side. That way it's out of the way when I want to mark the months. For the last page, I used a swimming pool sticker just to fill up the space. No particular reason as to why I chose it. This self-care log is a new thing for me. I've never really tracked what I did for self-care and I decided to do it for 2023. I'm just going to list down some of the things that give me comfort and then list the months when I did them. I haven't quite decided if I want to mark it like a tally or just simply check it with no indication of how many times I did them. Well, we'll see. I also left the page some space in case I want to add more to the list later. This page is another new thing I'm doing. It's my period and sick days tracking log. Before this, I usually mark on my monthly page, but since I'm not planning to have a month calendar page for 2023 because I hate drawing lines and writing out the dates, I decided to do this instead. It's pretty similar to my reading log tracking page. I just list down the days and months and that will be it for the whole year. I thought it was pretty appropriate using those lightning stickers to decorate the page because oftentimes I have period pains and it really strikes out at me out of nowhere. I usually have to take Advil for them. And I'm going to be marking the months with X marks as well because X represents how out of it I am when I'm having my period or when I'm sick. The next page is my savings log. I actually record my expenses using an Excel spreadsheet and so I'm not going to recreate something like that here. Instead, I'm just going to highlight my monthly savings or loss of savings so I can see it at a glance for 2023. The saving stickers I'm using is from the Happy Planner budget sticker book in case you're wondering. I never really made full use of the budget stickers and I'm not sure why I bought them in the first place. But now I have a reason to use them. I switched out this blue sticker box because uh, I felt the yellow one might match the rest of the stickers better.
The next page is my subscription log. I have something similar currently in my Happy Planner, but not as well laid out. For 2023, I plan to track when I'm actually subscribed to a particular service and when I'm not because there are some where I can pause or cancel at any time and I do do that depending on my budget for the month. Sometimes I have no idea that I'm actually subscribed to a particular service until I receive the email that it's going to be renewed, so I think this would really help me. This page here is my wish list. Currently, I do keep a list of things that I wish I could have but I couldn't buy them immediately depending on my budget. So having this page will allow me to prioritize what I should buy first and what can be delayed. So that was my one-time setup for the year and now we've arrived at my January setup. The following pages are going to be what I'll be recreating on a monthly basis depending on how it will work out. I may or may not remove some spreads that don't serve its purpose. The theme I'm going for here is to celebrate the coming of New Year so I'm using all of the New Year stickers that I have in my collection, some wrong wrong stickers and a few others that would match the color scheme. For the first spread, I'm making a focus goals and task page. This is where I'll be listing my goals I'm working on for the month and the steps needed to achieve them. I mentioned before that all of the detailed planning of my goals and resolution will be done separately and so I'll be referring to that outside of this bullet journal before noting down the essential in this page. Next page is my habit and mood tracker page. I currently do keep a similar spread in my happy planner and I really like it and so I'm having this tracker in my bullet journal for 2023. The only thing different is that I'm combining my mood tracker into the page. It will be listed at the bottom because it uses colors to mark my moods whereas the habits will be marked using an X. Next is my fitness log. In my happy planner, I actually use box stickers to create a calendar look but I'm running out of those types of stickers and so for my bullet journal, I'm doing an easier log. I'll just be listing down the days and then fill in what workout I'm doing for the day or if I'm having a rest day. The next spread is where I'll be listing down the books I'm currently reading and what did I purchase for the month that's not a regular expenditure. In my happy planner, I actually list these in my currently page and I have actually kept at it. So I'm doing them again for 2023. The next page is where I'll be listing what I've been watching during the month. I do this on a month calendar page in my happy planner and I really want to track this still. By the end of the month, I can review how much I've seen and what was my favorite. The columns are going to be the title, whether or not it's a movie or a TV show. Uh, genre, where I watched it from, whether it's on Viki, Netflix, and then the rating. The next page, I'm not sure I'll be keeping it. It's my social media page. 
I don't really track the number of followers or subscribers, but because I had so much space, I didn't want to just list down the videos I uploaded on YouTube. So I decided to create a space for the subscribers and followers. For Instagram, I wanted to try to revive that platform again. I have been neglecting Instagram and I want to see if I can get back into the habit again. Besides, one of my goals is to grow my channel, so this is probably necessary. This page is where I'll be logging Esri's activities. In my Happy Planner, I have a reading list and a journal entry type of page for her section. But because I'm using Goodreads, I felt it wasn't necessary to do her reading list anymore because I really borrow a lot of books for her and recording them in Goodreads is so much easier. As for the journal part, I actually have a separate journal for those types of entries anyway and so for this page, it's going to be different. I'll be listing down what extra activity classes she's taking, the number of books she's reading, how many boo-boo she's had, nightmares, what movies she has watched, our play sessions, her moods, and then a little bit of space for anything notable. This page here is my learning page. To be precise, what skills I'm working on as a personal development. If I'm job searching again, I'll be including a tracker for my job search tasks at the bottom. But for now, I'll just be listing things down related to improving my skills. This page is my gratitude a day page. I'm just going to simply list the dates and then write one line a day. In my happy planner, I'm actually using the month calendar page for my gratitude. But because I don't want to draw boxes, I felt this was a better and easier setup. This last page is my summary page. The idea is to highlight events or things that made the month great. I'm going to see if this works for me or if I'm having trouble finding time to journal it, I'll probably do away with it for the following month. So that was my bullet journal setup for 2023 and for the month of January. This took me a while to do and like I mentioned, I had filmed this over the course of a week and it did feel like it was taking a lot of my time. I thought about this on whether or not this is sustainable in the coming months, but then I have to realize that this is my first bullet journal and I don't have my layouts fixed yet. Once I get into the flow of things and remove things that don't serve me, it'll probably be easier. We'll see how this goes. I'm pretty excited to start using this bullet journal and every other day I find myself flipping through the pages to kind of soak it all in, imagining myself writing things down already. So just to recap, I will be listing tasks in my passion planner on a daily basis and then I would go through my bullet journal to work on the pages that need daily entry. Hopefully this system works and will not take up too much time. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like it, give me a thumbs up and if you want to see more of my future videos, do consider subscribing to my channel. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye!